I'm Dr. Lizzie Burns. I've been creating some artwork about viruses and vaccines. So I hope you've managed to print out this sheet. It's like a little tiny, I suppose, cartoon really, showing the life, as it were, of a virus. So I'm here with um, Dr. Chloe Myers, who's kindly agreed to answer some questions. And I thought what we could do is if you printed the sheet out, you can start colouring it in. Later on, you can cut these out, line them up and staple them, and then you'll be able to flick and see a little tiny story. So I'm starting to colour in. I've actually drawn a different virus to the coronavirus, and you may well have heard of it. Hopefully you have a virus called HIV. And there are lots more pictures of this, which is why I was able to draw this, but I thought rather interesting as well. I wonder, Chloe, from this sort of um, picture that I've drawn, this little cartoon, mm -hmm. um, are you able to sort of explain what's going on? How, how does a virus work? I suppose this is showing how it works in some, some ways. Yeah, yeah. So um, all viruses are the same in, in some respects in that they're very sort of simple um, things they're very simple viruses I don't want to say they're an, they're not a living thing and the oh. reason why they're not a living thing is because they require um, a host cell whether that be us or an animal or an organism in order to replicate themselves i.e that make more copies of themselves and, and continue to spread and all the rest of it um, and that's what makes them unique um, and they're very simple because um, they've just got a bit of genetic material that's then surrounded by a protective coat called a capsid um, and that's made up of, of protein um, and so what they do is they infect host cells and they they reprogram them um, using the machinery of host cells in order to uh, in order to to make a large number of other copies so if we go through the the figures that you're that you're coloring in at the yeah. moment so first of all it attaches so yes. quite often they'll have spikes or little Ooh. um <laughs> proteins sticking out of them and they're specially adapted so that they bind to the cell that they want to infect i was thinking they look a bit like kind of sp almost little alien capsules that kind of land on the surface of <laughs> yeah yeah and they've got planets. obviously the more spiky they are the more sort of surface that they create in order to to latch on and bind. So stuck on and it's going inside. So the genetic information is going inside there. Yeah, so they bind and it opens up. So all the genetic information, as you said, can get released into the into oh, the gone quiet. <laughs> yeah. Little do we know what's going on inside here. So the cells now itself beginning to make to make parts. new virus. Yeah. So depending on the type of virus depends on where in the cell that it starts doing that. But then it's using the host cell and the ends as quite often the enzymes that we have to as like a photocopier to make lots of new copies. It's loud. Then, yeah. Yeah. And so then what, they, just one's gone in and then just hundreds, thousands, thousands come out. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What? So very effective. And what would you hope happens in the body? If this is going on, this looks pretty disastrous. What what would yeah. you hope happens in the body? Yeah, so ideally, so what happens in the body? Quite often, you know, this can see, be seen as a bad or a good thing, but quite often when we get symptoms, i.e. we're feeling unwell when we've had an infection. So normally that's sort of further down the line. So once you've got this, the, the virus has got in, it's replicated itself and it's produced produce thousands of new copies when you begin to feel unwell that's quite often your immune system so that's your the cells in that you have in, in your body that try to fight infection and it's a, it's them responding to to all of these these um viruses that you've that have been replicating mm. so that can give you like fevers um they can release things that you know generally make you feel unwell and although you might feel rotten at the time but that's actually your body trying to fight off all of these um viruses and it could kill them directly so you produce special cells that are called cytotoxic cells which are able to sort of kill it directly or you might produce antibodies that, that bind onto the virus and then that stops it once you once it's all bound onto the edge of the virus that stops it from being able to to go through that that life cycle that you're you're drawing now so hopefully that would stop. But I guess HIV is a, is a different kind of virus, isn't it? It's in some ways quite clever from what I understand that it goes and attacks yeah. the cells that would normally get rid of a virus. Exactly, exactly. Uh, 
and is is that why it's been hard to make a vaccine obviously there isn't a it vaccine. has yeah it has been very 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 difficult and there are a number of reasons why hiv is very difficult um and if you if you think about people that you know they, if they do have an hiv infection it's not that they don't produce antibodies so if you if we test their blood they'll quite often have a lot of antibodies to hiv but that doesn't mean that they clear the infection i.e they don't get rid of the virus and that's why it's very hard one of the reasons why it's very hard to um, create a vaccine against HIV because it's very hard to produce an antibody that will actually in, eliminate the virus um, and another thing is with HIV because of the type of virus it is um, it makes lots of changes all the time as well so it's able to avoid so even if something might may be able to be bound by an antibody it might make changes that make it evade or escape from your antibody response mm -hmm. um, so yeah. that's two but there are there are a number of ways in which um, HIV can be challenging but that doesn't mean that it's a definite no there are still lots of fingers lots of, crossed yeah, yeah lots of vaccines in development and the other thing that we're fortunate with HIV over the years is that we've also got very effective drugs at the moment that help keep this virus suppressed to stop it replicating and they they improve all the time as well over yeah. the years so that they don't have many side effects and things so and at it's least definitely a work in progress less, yes and this at least is a virus that's less easily caught whereas airborne is just a whole other level of yeah exactly, exactly really right. do have to be a part whereas you can protect yourself from hiv you Thank can. you very much, Chloe. I hope you've managed to make a little flick book, staple it together, flick through it and bring that little virus to, to life, as it were. Thank you. <laughs>